Hey guys, and welcome to Need It Make It. How about we push the limits of 3D scanning with the phone by taking a scan of this model, which is only a two inch tall model with tons of detail. Oh yeah, and when we're done, we're gonna see how good it looks as a resin print. So stick around. Normally I wouldn't scan anything this small, but I'd like to push the limits of the software and the camera just to see how good it can be. This model is something I painted more than 20 years ago. It has no branding information that I can find, but I think this is going to be the perfect model to test those limits of the scanning software. And in this case, the software is Polycam. Normally I would start by scanning something directly through Polycam. So let's give that a go first. I've already tried this a few times and I didn't have great success. And I think I've narrowed it down to the software. It does not seem to utilize the different camera lenses. And I'm not really certain why that would be. I think the solution is just as simple as using the right lens for the job. And in this case, a macro lens would be ideal, but I don't have one. So we'll just make do with what we have. So the results I get here could even be improved further with the right lens. So the technique I'm using for something so small is that first I need to lighten up all of the dark areas a little bit. This way all the details can be captured even in those recesses. And for that, I'm just going to use some baby powder and a small brush and dust away any of the excess. Now, rather than using the app in the phone, I'm going to take some photos using just the plain camera app, being very careful to capture all of the sides in between each of the fingers. The goal really here is to give the software enough information to enclose the object completely. And that means also to scan the underside. So once that's done, the photos can then be uploaded using the browser version of the software. With this method, we'll be able to use up to 250 photos. And just like the phone app, it will take a little bit of time to combobulate the 3D model. And now since the model is not scaled through these photos, we can take a measurement and scale it here. In this case, the overall height is two inches. And you can tell that the software isn't built for taking scans of these small items because it's really hard to zoom into this model at that two inch overall height. So I would recommend rotating the object first and then scaling it to the final size afterward. And here is the result in 3D. And of course, the texture always masks the real scan. So we need to turn that off. So how good is this result? Well, we really need something to judge it against. So here are two other scans, one with the app taken directly on the phone with Polycam. And as you can see, it's not even close. I wasn't even able to get the object completely closed in. The next was created using photos and pretty good lighting, but no talcum powder and no close up shots either of each of the appendages. And the final, of course, was this scan with talcum powder and some close-up shots. Let's see how good this looks as a resin model and how close it is to the original. But before we do a detailed comparison, I'm going to drop it on the floor and break the arms off. Now at a quick glance, the model looks pretty good, but having a closer look shows that some of those recesses were not captured correctly on the face, the nostrils, for example on the arm pocket on the inside of the elbow and the pocket just above the head. Another area which could have been better was on the back. The patterning of the growth rings was not very pronounced. And since the resin model was based on a scan with no talcum powder and no close-up shots, if I were to reprint this again, I should have even better results. Now I do have some silver PLA hanging around. I thought I'd use my 3D printer to see how good the scan could turn out using the talcum powder version. The beauty of this process is that if you see an area which could use improvement, you can take another close-up shot and add that photo to the other photos you've taken. And as long as the arms aren't broken off, you should be able to achieve even better results. Now, because this model had been painted dark in the recesses, even with the talcum powder, it was not able to pick up the true depth of those dark areas. A model which is already painted is really good. It provides a lot of color variation but black or dark recesses isn't going to yield the best results with this method. 
And to help me with the scan of this model, many of the photos were taken with it propped on top of this white plastic rod. It helps quite a bit to reduce shadows when an object sits directly on something flat. And it allowed me to take photos from below a little bit easier as well. Now there's always room for improvement. I think a macro lens would go a long way to capturing even more detail. And I think the software can handle these close-up shots quite well, as long as the items that we scan have enough variation to be able to tell which photo belongs to which side of the object. So this is pretty cool. We've got a really detailed 3D model. I've got a few ideas of my own on what I could use this for, but what about you guys? I'm interested to hear from you. Please let me know in the comments below. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, consider subscribing and hit that like button. Take care, everybody. We'll see you on the next one.